Uh, my name is Denise. I'm one of the librarians here on the San Luis campus, and we like to do poetry readings a couple times a semester. They seem to be um, things that people like to do to participate in, whether you're just a, whether you're a reader or you're a listener or just kind of you know relaxing and having some snacks. Um, this is part of the faculty lecture series, which means we try to include um, some of our teachers on campus. We had about three of them who called me up and say, I can't come. Uh, one's dog was very sick, and another one remembered it was his wife's birthday and couldn't get permission. And I forget what the other uh, happenstance was. But anyway, we're glad you're here. And um, some folks are going to be reading in a different language. And again, the handouts should kind of help you out and try to get that information to you. Um, we will uh, probably do another poetry uh, series in the spring, and we're looking at doing something to celebrate uh, the 100th anniversary of women's right to vote. So if that's a topic that kind of interests you, let me know. Um, and we're always interested in hearing your ideas on uh, doing things like this. Okay, um, I think we're going to start off with Marcia. And if you're a reader, if you can just tell us um, your name, where you work on campus, or your affiliation on campus, and then why you chose the poem, the poem that you like. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm lucky today because it's not just me. Um, <laughs> I have someone to read to you my poem in English also. And when I say my, my selection. <laughs> Sabina Zink, she is a uh, student here. I'm Marcia. I'm back here. And uh, we're going to come over from Princeton. We're actually in this class. It's not so bad for her to ditch, but I'm actually the teacher, so. <laughs> it's pretty bad. But I, I can't, I, I love the opportunity to read aloud and to have people listen and to listen to other people read aloud. So I have a Spanish poem, very short, and then I'm going to read one more poem. Um, language. I studied four languages formally, but my um, the ones I'm <laughs> passable at are uh, French and Spanish. I also studied Italian. And I love all of them. I love studying language. I like even studying English. Uh, but Spanish is really wonderful. And I can, I can kind of um, exemplify what I love about Spanish by using an, a word, one word example. The word is cielo, which means, and many of you will know this, it means the sky. But it also means the heavens, heaven. And our word for sky doesn't really mean heaven. And our word heaven doesn't really mean sky. So like every time you come into the word cielo, you get whether they mean, oh, it's a you know sunny, warm day and the sky is blue today, that would be cielo the sky. You also get a shadow of the other meaning of the word heaven. And the converse is also true, the obverse. If you're reading about the heavens, you also have the sense of sky. So you read the word. Okay. Uh, the, po the poet is Federico Garcia Lorca. And Issue. He's a Spanish poet from Spain, and so they pronounce him a little different than the Spanish I have. My Spanish is sort of more, sort of more baja. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to begin. The poem is called Caracola. Me han traído una caracola dentro de canta un mar de nata. Mi corazón se llena de agua con pececillos de sombra y plata. Me han traído una caracola. Pero Sabina, I'll tell you why. Unless you want to. It is a snail. They have brought me a snail. Inside, it sings a map green ocean. My heart swells with water, with small fish of brown and silver. They have brought me a snail. I was thinking that we could say it at the same time and be like, Okay, so I have a, like a companion poem from a woman, Sandra Cisneros, and she's a later poet. This is a poet uh, from, she's still living. <laughs> she's alive. I love to say that about artists. This one's alive. Anyway, um, and she is of um, Hispanic descent, but she writes in English. So luckily, I can read it to you in English. And because my Spanish is okay, but it's not great with multi-syllable words. That beautiful boy who lives across from the Handy Andy by Sandra Cisneros. And her titles are the first line, so you're gonna have to hear me say that one more time. 
That beautiful boy who lives across from the handy Andy invited me to his birthday party. 28th this Saturday, December 2nd, 1989. So Saturday night, I am going to put on my prettiest dress, the black one with the green and purple sequins and my cowboy boots, and I am going to be there with a six pack and this poem. Like any fool who loves to look at a cloud or evening poppy or a red, red pickup truck. <laughs> Thank you. I selected the Quadrados y Angulos by Alfonsina Storni. She uh, was Argentinian, many other things. Uh, she died in 1938. Um, I learned about this poem in my Spanish 1 and Spanish 2 class. Uh, both teachers taught enough for this to teach it. And, uh, and I selected it because it translates very well. And I'll read you the Spanish and I'll read you the translation. And, uh, Please forgive my Spanish, it's not uh, just kitchen Spanish. Uh, however, uh, cuadrados y angulos, casas empiladas, casas empiladas, casas empiladas. Cuadrados, 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 casas empiladas. Las gentes ya tienen el alma cuadrada, de días empilada, y ángulo en la espalda. Yo misma he retiro a él una lágrima dos mil rara. Which uh, is pretty cool. And once you translate it, she's, uh, in English, is houses in a line, in a line, in a line there. Squares, squares, squares. Houses in a line. Even people now have square souls, ideas in files. I declare, and on their shoulders, angles wear. Just yesterday, I shed a tear, and oh God, it was square. <laughs> <laughs> Alexander Block, the Russian poet, and he writes a poem about reincarnation, and it's on the handout, but the, I cut off the end. So if you take the beginning, which says like, no chulitsa panara cheka, which means like, night, uh, night, um, like a lantern, and chemistry score. So the ending is apteka poems. Uh, so, but not, so it goes the opposite. So it's like a whole wheel of reincarnation. So I'll do it. Noch ulitsa panara cheka es mis panum pitus kisiet. Shni yesho pachetir pika subutata iskota niet. Um rio shnechnyo shapyat nachala apteka ulitsa panara. So I'm Don Cleave and I work here in the library as a technician and um, I was an English Lit student a long, long time ago uh, when the language was first invented, in fact. <laughs> and so that's actually what I've chosen. I've actually chosen a poem called The Wife's Lament 
which is an Anglo-Saxon poem. It's written um, in the Dark Ages from the Exeter book, which is a book of Anglo-Saxon poetry we've got. You need to remember, too, that what we tend to call Old English uh, is often said to be the language of Shakespeare, with the these and the thighs and the vows. But actually, Old English is this original root language, Anglo-Saxon, where the Angles and the Saxons got together in the UK before it was the UK and had this as their root language. Later on, it developed after the Norman Conquest in 1066 into Middle English, and that's Chaucer's language, the Canterbury Tales. After a little more time passed, then we had Elizabethan English. Elizabethan English is now, okay, this is the these and Nies. That's the King James Bible. That's Shakespeare's sonnets and his plays. That's uh, Mallory's uh, Le Morte d'Arthur. So we're going to step way back in time, and I'm going to read the wife's lament to you. And it's a little bit long, but the thing that it's got going for me is nobody actually knows how this is pronounced. So I can pretty much say whatever I want to, well, there's probably something else that I know, but anyway. By the way, the reason I chose this, there are several interpretations as to what the wife's lament is, but I personally think uh, that it's a ghost story. And uh, if you look at the handout and you read through, you may see why I think that it's a ghost story. Ich dis die Grecia mi huyam, min resifreser ich ta tjejma, hot, ich irem fuyavad, si den ich of wills, mi was all the eldest no matonadu, a ich, we to one on rich to resta, ers mi la fuyavad te on an oleo, o for the gear, half the ich utier. War me made through, long to swear, the each may be earned to what burger sent and win the as wretch. For me, the where fear the onion that does more as Margus Yetchen, Verdima Yoth of Ethat, he for the end of all the right me, yet we are still well richer. If the lovely course don't match longer. Het me kreka for mean, her her meme, and art each layer for a loot. On these and long stead, hold the free on the forward in me he a year more. Da each may fur, ye may at me, mon and boon. Her sally ye, he wound more me thin, more there. He gained the now, bleeding a barrel full off with the adore. At unch negadal nene death, on a weak ellis, at his stat on wealth. His no schwa, hit no well, friendship upon chair. Shall each fior gain a mean as fell hopper, father dreog? Het match more moon in a wood of a well up under a trail, a dam, a trap, a yard, a stay, a scared cellar. Yard each dome of long. See the name of Dima. Do not bear bitter of a tonus, rare on the wax. Each meal and beast full of make air rush to the yard. From sheep fiend, friend. Seemed on the other and live your legenda. There you go. Where the other? Thorny each on the turn on the gong, yeah. On the actor, yon thas, earth shrap. There each seat and mob. So long a day. There each weep, ma. Nina's rassy fair full of fair. Hold on each after and make thar mo cher min regers. Mi alastas long as fame each on visum life begat. She a young moon, wees and young old. Her yell can give the arts with a job and shell, leave the gibara, each on breast chair. Seen sword and yeder, say a team seat lum ye long ere this world weena. Sifu weedeth it, purest, 
Wo klang das dat min freund sitet und der Stadt liebte, Sturm aber rinnet. Wien aber gewohnt, Water aber flohen und drehen selber, Drogel si min Wien ein bisschen mochier. E jom tu auch will ich kein Mitch, Weil die da beschere lang wieder, Leot das zu wieder. So much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, um, the, the mistake that you people often make when they read, try to read Anglo-Saxon, is they try to read it with a more Germanic guttural, uh-huh. and it's not Germanic. It's uh-huh. more Swedish, Scandinavian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, interesting. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. she was going through and put her mom would then put all the poems in a scrapbook and so when Carolyn was going through all of those poems she was thinking what a great memory I have and how I was introduced to language and poetry and the love of words and she worked together with John Muck who is a really um, spectacular watercolor children's illustrator and to illustrate the book, the poems in this book that were their favorites. And there's a lot of classics in here. There's Emily Dickinson, there's um, Pablo Neruda, there's um, uh, Carlos William Car- Lo- Carlos, William Carlos, <laughs> and um, William Blake. And so I thought I would share this one, Tiger, Tiger, because it's such a beautiful watercolor and it's William Blake's famous poem. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare seize the fire? And what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when thy heart began to beat, what dread hand and what dread feet? What the hammer, what the chain? In what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread grasp? There its deadly terrors clasp. When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he make the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? So I thought I'd also share just one or two shorter ones. Um, this is um, John's favorite poem, and it's called For Falling in Love is Like Owning a Dog. First of all, it's a big responsibility, especially in a city like New York. So think long and hard before deciding on love. On the other hand, love gives you a sense of security. When you're walking down the street late at night and you have a leash on love, ain't no one going to mess with you. Love doesn't like being left alone for long, but come home and love is always happy to see you. It may break a few things accidentally in its passion for life, but you can never be mad at love for long. Is love good all the time? No, no. Love can be bad, bad love, bad, very bad love. 
Sometimes love just wants to go for a nice long walk that one runs you around the block and leaves you panting. It pulls you in several different directions at once or winds around and around you until you're all wound up and can't move. But love makes you meet people wherever you go. People who have nothing in common but love stop and talk to each other on the street. Throw things away and love will bring them back again and again and again. But most of all, love needs love, lots of it. And in return, love loves you and never stops. And that's from Taylor Mallory. And then one last one. Um, Carolyn, um, Jacqueline Kennedy, or Jacqueline Bouvier, wrote poetry herself. And so Carolyn and um, John had their favorite poem, and this is one their mother wrote from when they started going to school, and September was coming around, and their summers were over. So she wrote, this one is called Thoughts by Jacqueline Bouvier. I love the autumn, and yet I cannot say all the thoughts and things that make me feel this way. I love walking on the angry shore to watch the angry sea where summer people were before, but now there's only me. I love wood fires at night that have a ruddy glow. I stare at the flames and think of long ago. I love the feeling down inside me that says to run away, to come and be a gypsy and laugh the gypsy way. The tangy taste of apples, the snowy mists at morn, the wanderlust inside you when you hear the huntsman's horn. Nostalgia, that's the autumn, dreaming through September just a million lovely things I will always remember. And that's Jacqueline Bouvier, and that's the illustration that John was, chose to do with that. So thank you. all the time about having to do this and their last minute you know they would run around trying to find a poem at the last minute and stuff but she's kept the tradition on with her children and they do the exact same thing they complain but yet they really like flipping through the scrapbook of things that they've made and poetry they collected thank you I chose this poem because it, I first heard it and it was featured in a movie, which some of you might know, some of you might not know, called Four Weddings and a Funeral. Mm -hmm. and, and that movie is a movie that my mom and I will watch together, kind of like ritually, on whether one of us is feeling bad or one of us just wants to relax and watch something, and that's our go-to film. So that's where I first heard this poem, and I love it. It's a really beautifully written poem. Stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone, prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone, silence the pianos and with muffled drum, bring out the coffin, let the mourners come. Let aeroplanes circle, moaning overhead, scribbling on the sky the message, he is dead. Put crepe bows round the white necks of the public doves, let the traffic policemen wear black cotton gloves. He was my north, my south, my east, and west my working week and my Sunday rest, my noon, my midnight, my talk, my song. I thought that love would last forever. I was wrong. The stars are not wanted now. Put out every one. Pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. Pour away the ocean and sweep up the wood. For nothing now can ever come to any good. And that is the poem. It's very short. gentle into that good night by Dylan Thomas. I saw this in the movie uh, Back to School of Rodney Dangerfield, and his rendition is, was so amazing. It just stuck with me all this time, and it is just amazing. <sighs> Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at the close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. 
the wise men at the end know dark is right, because their words have a fork no lightning. They do not go gentle into that good night. Good men, the last wave by, crying how bright their frail feet might have danced in a green bay. Rage, rage, instead of dying of the light. Wild men who caught and sang the sun in flight and learned too late they grieved on its way. Do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men near death who see with blinding sight. Blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. Rage, rage against that dying of the light. And you, my father, there on sad height, curse less me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against that dying of the light. Thank you. author. Uh, this is where we bring um, a best-selling author to campus and have a series of programs. They come and do a presentation, go into classrooms, and so forth. Uh, before Kevin's um, novel, The Yellow Birds, kind of made it big, and that's what we kind of had him come and talk about, he'd written uh, a one or two volumes of poetry. And I read his novel, and I read the poetry, and really, I like the poetry better than the novel. And I did tell him that in a, in a nice way. I mean, what does he care? I'm just you know, a librarian. But um, he's since written at least one novel and possibly more poetry. I'm not 100% sure. Um, his background is um, grew up in the East, and he has a um, Master's of Fine Arts degree. Uh, and then he served in the U.S. Army in Iraq. Uh, 2004, 2008, he was deployed as a machine gunner in Mosul and Tel Afar. So this is from his book, uh, Letter Composed During a Lull in the Fighting, a series of poems. And uh, we've got a couple copies of it. These books here are all things that can be checked out. So again, a little more somber. A couple of the um, Abbreviations that are used are MSR, Main Supply Route, PBT, Paps Blue Ribbon, and I think there's another one. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, Meditation on a, supply, a Main Supply Route. I recall Route Tampa going on in a straight line all the way out of the war. A hundred MSRs with names once so unpronounceable they are now called Chevy and Toyota. Their attendant smells and voices arrive in such disparate places as Danville, Virginia, Monterey, California, Steubenville, Ohio, Wolasco, Texas, Fayette Hills of both North Carolina and of Arkansas, the Bronx, New York, where Curtis Jefferson's cauterized face still burns as he wraps his lips around a straw to drink his juice and his muscles wither and he wishes he had died. Instead of living housebound, bedbound, mindbound, bodybound, like a child, watching as his mother watched the roads, pitted and seated, arrive as one road in front of his house, get out of a black sedan with government use license plates, and become two men walking him up the front steps of the converted brownstone where they wait. And the roads reach out to Stephen Abernathy in the factory where he works on the sea shift forever. And Stephen saying to the old intractable drunks he works with that all the pain is phantom. And that's all as he cleats the red knuckle of his leg 
into the stirrup above the plastic rest of it before they take him to the VFW post for a PBR on them at least, for, at least twice a week, but now daily for almost a month. Arriving in the glare of 6 a.m. light off the quarter panels of their rusted trucks. Sometimes by noon, the old men say, Vietnam, and he says, I lost my leg on the gone damn MSR. And old Earl, Earl Yates says, nah, they took it, the fuckers. I am home and whole, so to speak. The street lights are in place along the avenue, just as I remembered. And just as I remember, there is tar slick on the poles because it has rained. Doesn't matter. I know these roads will work their way to me. They may arrive right here at this small circle of light holding in on itself where brick and broken sidewalk meet. So I must be prepared. I can't remember how to be alive. It has begun to rain so hard I fear, fear I'll drown. I guess we ought to take these pennies off of our eyes, strike into them new likeness, and toss them with new wishes into whatever water can be found. Kevin Powers. Okay, Christina is not here. I think I am out of readers. If anybody else wants to take a shot. I have some on my own, but it has to be off camera. Uh, well, I think we're, we're this is I'll something do another we're, one. Okay. Go ahead. It's got to be on camera because we're uh, contracted to have this available. Okay. So, so we'll have Christopher do another one. So reading. Okay. Christina doesn't make it. Okay, she comes. <laughs> okay. My favorite. I like uh, the ground pole. A lot of poets are kind of dark, and uh, there's some pretty, like, uh, William Butler Gates, and I would like to find one of his in Gaelic, but the poem I want to read is um, it's by J.R.R. Tolkien, like, he created his own language, like, Elvish, when you but he kind of modeled it off of Finnish, which is like Estonian. And so it's, I don't know if he created it or if he uh, borrowed it. Okay, here it is. Quenya. So I printed it up on Wikipedia. Quenya is one of the fictional languages devised by J.R.R. Tolkien and used by elves in his legendarium. So it reminded me when you're talking about Kevin, and he's in, in uh, Baghdad. And so um, Tolkien was in World War I in the Battle of Song. And they say, well, he wrote the Lord of the Rings while he's not all in. So like, um, I think there's like, uh, I can't even really think. There's the Mordor would be like the Germans. And, uh -huh. So anyway, here it goes. I, Gloria, Gloria, Lantar Lassi Surinan Yeni Uno Tigno Pio Ramar Alderon. Ah, like the gold of all the leaves in the wind, long years numberless as the wings of trees, the beginning of the Quenya poem written in Tengwars in Latin script. So I read the Hobbit when I was a kid. That was pretty cool. I read the Lord of the Rings. I like that. And I tried to Silmarillion, and I was like, what is this, man? It was like, all this weird and elves. And so that's Thank you. That's okay. okay. And Christina is here. She's gone to the restroom. <laughs> so uh, let's just pick something. How about if I just read something off the top of my head? Is that going to be okay? Uh, and this is Jack. Hirschman, 
transfiguration. I'll uh, just pick this at random. <laughs> Here we go. I am peasant next to your language because I am not a peasant. Simple next to your love because I wound it. Dumb next to your voice because you are my lips and leave me speechless. Leave me also loneliness. Hurt me with the inexpressible. And because you live the way you do, and I cannot, I must go elsewhere. In this corner of my shoulder and weep you, who love me inexhaustibly, more than I can ever hope to silence with a poem. Because it is the silence I hope for. Because it is the very pure silence hope itself is. And so I bend to my pencil, I say, you to the beautiful page. You, I say yes without speaking. I say many things, and still, there is room, there is space. Your face is where I see forever. Transfiguration by Jack Hirschman. I'll have to read that again to really understand it. <laughs> So now we're the biggest buyers of books so we can read you for filth. 
our, <laughs> sorry, our magic is in our love and our tears, our fears and our flyness, our sisterhoods and insecurities, our ride or don't even try it. We are not the one and still we rise. This is for the colored girls who consider getting your life and are reclaiming our time. Beautiful. So the poem was by Amanda Seals. She's a comedian. I don't know if you guys have heard of her. She's been on a show, I think, ABC or NBC. Um, but I listened to her podcast. Uh, it allows me to kind of reflect on things that, you know, that go on politically, but also go on just in your average life. And so she did that performance on um, BET had um, like a social award uh, for Instagrammers, Facebook people that have gone big. Um, and she performed that poem. When I heard it, I just was left with chills. I felt. It was so beautiful, it was so powerful, and it just spoke to me. So, thank you. I'm glad you got to read it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that concludes our presentation. Can I get up there so we can? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that concludes our poetry session today. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, the faculty lecture series, for um, promoting this. And keep your uh, enthusiasm for poetry alive. And those of you that have more readers, please come up and take one of your free prizes. And we still have cookies and water. So, all right, thanks.